Okay. So this one, I'm here already. Are you able to log back on? Okay. That was very bad, you know, very, very bad. And I was even trying to see if I could see the person and block them, but I wasn't able to see. Yeah, me too. I even left the meeting and came back and, you know, I ended the meeting and came back again, the same thing. Okay, I see someone is uh, Nilea. Nilea, yeah. <laughs> hi. Hi, how are you? Okay. Good, I'm good. Hi, how did you get the new meeting information from Dilip G's page? Guruji, Guruji. I, I sent a message to Guruji. Okay. Was it, it was a little bit... Uh, yes. It's, your, it's a yoga yes. day. Guruji, do you want me to post that on your um, page or? Let me see. Okay. Yes, I think you're here now. Okay. So I'm going to make you the host. Okay. And then you can make as many people co host as you want. Right. All right. So again, sorry about that, but um, no, now wow. there's right. there's password. Good. So for the previous meeting, we'll find out how to edit and cut out the section where it was at. Hello, hello. So, Sabida, Sabida Ji. Oh, this is horrible. I, I sent a new link. We created a new link. I put it on your Facebook Messenger. Okay, good. Yeah. We, we won't give up. We don't have to worry about these people. Yeah, yeah we'll, you know, we'll reset the meeting, um, you know, as much as we can. But I think now with the yeah. password, yeah. it should be fine.
Are you able to invite uh, people again, Dili? I'm, I'm just, I am just writing to people. Okay. So in the meantime, I'm gonna quickly go set up the call for my mom, and I'll come back. Okay. Oh, very good. <laughs> people are coming back so that's very good right. all right i'm gonna step away briefly and i'll be right back okay oh uh, namaste namaste we are getting back sorry to <laughs> i cannot believe anyway this is a problem with this world. So how many people are back? And now it's three. Okay, eleven back. The last <laughs> one, oh, Sadaji, that was it. Good. I just put it on Facebook. Who else? We'll take a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Ah, more busy, okay. Good. Uh, Ani Kalyani, Janet. Anybody have her number? I do. Oh, could you give her a call? Please. Okay. I think that is... Uh... Yeah. Okay, Sabdaji, we'll continue. <laughs> Shall we wait for Dr. Annie or? or... No, we don't have to wait. Uh, Sharon will take care of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, friends, let us uh, take a deep breath in and let it out and we relax ourselves, relax our body, relax our minds, bring our thoughts back together and uh, in the first meeting or the first half of the meeting, I saw many. Um, and in the second half, I would like to see 
smiling faces also. Um, and I was just thinking that four years ago, when Yoga Day started, we had four years of lots of external activities. Then last year, due to heavy rainfall for one week or over a week, we had to be indoors. And this year, due to COVID-19, we're not just indoors, we're really indoors. We're kind of secluded. And what a, what a in a way, an honor or a beautiful way to honor Yoga Day because as it is said, when you can't go outside, you have to go inside. And that's what yoga is all about, you know, really stepping away from everything around us and focusing on the present, on the now, going within and being with the self. So on this very auspicious International Yoga Day, uh, I would like to remind all our friends out there here um, this morning and this, at this event that how much more important it is that we really spend time with our inner self, enjoying the company of ourselves, ourselves connecting with ourselves, creating that safe space inside um, the, the, the speaker before me was sharing about home and family, and we know that family and home extends beyond um, those uh, limited borders of uh, biological family or, or four walls in, um, around within which we live. Uh, yoga allows us to extend that boundary, extend that, those borders, and to envelop or, or embrace everyone around me and really see each one as part of my global family. And to be able to do that, how much important it is that I spend that time or I spend some time every day reflecting on our inner self, being within the space of the room of my mind, being in there, nurturing that space, filling it, with the qualities of what I truly am, the qualities of love, peace, compassion, understanding, respect, kindness, etc., to fill my inner space with that so that, and even those who had, um, who tried to interject in our beautiful um, event shortly before, um, let's have feelings of compassion feelings of forgiveness, because that's what yoga is. It was, it was a bit of a shock. It was, um, it threw everybody off. Um, it did, th it threw me off for a moment. And then I thought, because it was my, I heard about this many times, but it was my first experience. And at all I could have said was, let me just, of peace. Let me just send a lot of compassion to those souls because look how they're spending their time. Look how we're spending our time, but with the hope that something touches them and they're able to awaken to the truth that's really inside of them. So I wouldn't say much now. I would just pause for a, a moment, maybe for 30 seconds to a minute and together as a group, as family, as friends, as a global family, um, they have effective, um... let us just take a few seconds, go inside, go within, touch and tap into our beauty, our goodness, our kindness. Hold that space for a few seconds in silence. And now, allow that energy to go out, out into our world, 
out into all the souls out there who might be hurting, who might be feeling hopeless, who might be in a state of sad, who might be in a state of disturbance, mentally disturbed, whatever it might be, let us send that good energy out into our world. And especially our brothers and sisters. And forgive them for whatever they had done. Let the feelings of compassion flow. For maybe they don't realize that it was to their benefit that they disrupted a yoga day event so that we get the opportunity to send them some good energy. For that is what yoga really is all about. So I want to thank you again for the and may this beautiful event continue and may this energy become even more and more powerful and go out of there. And as Denise said a little earlier, let us be the change that we want to see. For an eye for, what well, how you said? An eye for an eye makes everyone blind. Right? So let's keep our hearts clean and share <coughs> this with everyone. Thank you again. God bless. Om Shanti. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, thank you. Somebody called and they want to enter. I said, no, only for our group. Period. We don't want to take another risk, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they will be our support, you know. Anyway. Uh, I want to invite Sharon. Uh, she's doing uh, prayer and a little message. She's a vice president of Institute of International Social Development and NGO representative at the United Nations. Moreover, she was with us a long time. I think since 2007, we had the yoga festival at the UN and we had wonderful time last or uh, 13 years friendship. Reverend Sharon Hamilton Gates, please, floor is for you. Blessed sacred spirit, awaken us to love life, enough to honor nature to the best of our ability. Summer light, beloved sun. Relations is around the world. Sacred Earth, Mother, we remember to honor you in gratitude, enough to know how to walk in beauty. Human family, let us be committed to love, honor, and respect the natural cycles of life throughout time and space in order to heal ourselves in harmony with this beautiful planet. Om Shanti 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 Peace Namaste, Namaste, Sharon. So, ne next person is Dr. Padmini Murthy, MDPH, MPH. She is the Global Health Lead American Medical Women's Association and NGO representative at the United Nations. She is very active at the UN with the different committees, and you always see with her, her and her daughter. You know, <laughs> 
working hard. These are the people we need, like a family. Doctor, I am just going for the all the bios because we lost the time. No problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dilip ji. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, namaste. And you can see I'm in my Indian avatar today. <laughs> Uh, so I just wrote a poem because I'm also a writer and I wrote a poem just for International Day of Yoga. So I will just read it before I start speaking. International Day of Yoga. Exhale the negativity, inhale the positivity. Yoga is a way of life and it helps to end strife. By its patterns of weaving, it supports universal well-being. Spreading the message of compassion is indeed yoga's true passion. So I just want to say that yoga does not have a religion, does not have color, does not have caste, does not have creed. It is a way of life and it unites all of us. So putting on my physician and public health hat, I just want to briefly discuss. It's just not only that we feel good doing yoga, but it has so many medical benefits. And uh, there is actually a lot of research done um, by premier institutions in the world, such as Harvard Medical School. And they have found that yoga promotes well-being, both physical and mental. And especially now during COVID, it's really important that we continue um, to practice yoga. I, for myself, practice yoga, my pranayam every day for 30 minutes and do my stretches. Because one of the things I have found in my personal experience, which I, I would like to share with the yoga family yoga. here and the community, is that uh, three years ago when I was in the United Kingdom for a medical conference, I got a severe bout of pneumonia because of all the pollen of the sycamore trees. And guess what helped me beat this was pranayama. So I do pranayam every single day. It's just like, especially if you have any uh, respiratory issues, allergies, asthma, it is really good because there are no, this is the beauty of yoga. There are no ill effects of yoga. Like some medications, you have side effects, but yoga you don't have. But at the same time, when you're doing all the stretches, it's like somebody trying to run a marathon without training you need to slowly start doing the various stretches for yoga. And I was just looking at another article, which was just um, you know, tweeted by a good friend of mine, in which he mentioned that in India, uh, the number of people uh, due to co uh, you know, at home, diabetes increased. <laughs> now, yes, it's a sedentary lifestyle because you're putting in so many carbs. You don't have anything. You just go to the refrigerator. You go to the kitchen. You just keep eating. So it's like it's a hobby eating. You're eating not because you need the food or you're hungry, but because you just have nothing to do. So yoga really helps to keep the blood glucose levels in check. Similarly, pregnant women who do yoga, light yoga as advised by a trained yoga teacher, and run it by their physician have definitely uh, the blood flow improves to their um, fetus they're carrying and it decreases the um, uh, you know the incidence of low birth weight children so there are so many prophylactic effects so many preventative effects of yoga but one thing i would really like to say as i finish up is because Yoga also helps us become a mindful eater. This is important, especially now, because we are in lockdown. So what do you do? Yes, some of us live in houses. Some of us are in the city, in your, in your apartment. Just do right. yoga every day, because to me, it helps me find my Zen. And I have benefited a lot from doing uh, yoga and I know so many people who have also benefited from doing yoga, especially, you know, people <clears throat> like one of my colleagues who is a physician himself. He told me he's a very well-known naturopath um, and Ayurvedic physician in Seattle. And he said that he was suffering from asthma for over 20 years. Eight, to one, eight months and one year after he started regular doing, especially the pranayam, especially anulom viyom and, you know, bastrika pranayam and also kapal bhati, but gently, you don't want to rip anything. You don't want to hurt yourself. He has now reduced 
the amount of uh, inhalers he uses and he's practically cured now. So people don't understand. It's not some mumbo jumbo. There is so much of evidence based literature out there which supports the benefits of yoga and even stretches people with arthritis you do gentle stretches it really helps you but again i would like to caution that we need to do this under supervision it's not that you just you know like you see baba ramde who i think is an amazing yoga practitioner um you know we cannot do yoga as vigorously as some of these gurus do uh when the pmi program i know dilip ji you were uh, we were all watching it we saw a uh, sat guru uh, uh jaggi who talked about the kriya and he said put your tongue out and again there was a caution there of how the instructions have to be followed so in conclusion i uh, i thank you so much for this opportunity and as uh, i think sabita was saying yes last year we were all in the un general assembly because there was torrential rain and we were all trying to do yoga in the general assembly which itself is an experience and hopefully next june 21st we can all meet on the lawns of the north lawn and um, you know do that and again uh, i just would like to give a shout out to denise um uh, you know being on the yoga committee and also to dilip and all of you there because we all this is what unites us we are not preaching any religion and as somebody was saying i think one of the un resident uh, coordinators uh, in india that this is the best gift india has given the world is the gift of yoga thank you so much namaste guruji mic open please audio open yeah, yeah i got it sorry one minute So uh, I'll invite uh, Anand Patroli. He's uh, one of the senior Indian citizen who, who is living in New York. Uh, approximately 60 years he is in New York. He's one of our trusty in New York community. I want to invite him to bring his message. And by come to this. Yeah. Oh, five minutes, sir. We can start. Start. You can start? talk. Yeah. Uh, where is my picture? That when you talk, it will come. Yeah. Start. Namaste, everyone. Can you hear? Can you hear? Yes. Yeah. You can start. Namaste everyone, this is uh, Anand Patroli here, Secretary for the World Yoga Community in New York. Uh, I remember my early years of practicing yoga um, with an uh, understanding that uh, healthy body has healthy mind. It's more on the physical side than spiritual side. Come closer. Yeah. Come closer. Come closer. Yo, yoga, yoga asanas are, are learned and practiced under the guidance of the, of the guru. In the field of education, it is believed that there is no knowledge without, without the college. And in the spiritual world, it is believed that there is no knowledge without the guru. Yoga asanas, postures, related to your breathing has more than physical, it's spiritual side of the uh, yoga that can be learned only from the master. 
and after learning that it helps you to go beyond physical. It is a, a science that helps me afterwards when I know, knew the spiritual aspect of that, then that helped me to tune my body, mind and intellect, uh, creating my own harmony. It is like a sitar is tuning 21 strings of the, his instrument or a well-tuned pianist for a perfect music. Well-tuned body, mind and intellect can lead you to the spiritual aspect of the yoga, which is, which enables me to uh, practice yoga with total awareness and uh, enables me uh, to uh, enables me to walk on the path of spiritual on the spiritual path as a seek, seeker of spiritual truth. Thank you. Thank you, Anand Boy. Appreciate it. So I want to invite Sri Shomik Chaudhary, the President of Institute of International Social Development and the main NGO representative at the United Nations. One of my uh, long-time friends is very active with the Indian community and the international group. He was in the media. Shomik Ji, floor for you. Thank you, Guruji. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank everyone for inviting me uh, to speak on this uh, uh, very, very uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, Ambassador Hasino, distinguished uh, speakers and friends. Uh, I wanted to take a page out of uh, our ancient uh, Vedic uh, civilization and culture, uh, where we talk about, when we talk about health, we take a holistic approach towards our health. So we define, or rather we have identified the various aspects or various levels of our existence uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in this world, uh, in our body. The first level is the matter sheath. The second level is the vital energy sheath. The third level is the mental awareness sheath. The fourth level is the knowledge or wisdom sheath. And the last level is bliss sheet. Now, all when we talk about health and uh, uh, you know uh, health, we have to ensure that we are able to uh, uh, take care of all these five levels of existence that we have, each and every human being have, and ensure that we improve every aspect of our existence. And then only we are talking about a healthy human being. So, how do we do it? The uh, simple way is, uh, has been uh, propounded or uh, has been written down by Sage Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras, a step-by-step -step way in which we can improve our health in a comprehensive and a holistic way. The first uh, aspect that he talks about is Yama, which are five ethical codes of behavior towards others. First is nonviolence, truthfulness, non-stealing, continence, and non-covetousness. The second aspect that he talks about is niyama, five ethical codes of behavior towards oneself, cleanliness, contentment, sustained spiritual practice, and surrender to God. Then we have the next aspect, which is asanas, which we normally uh, refer to when we talk about yoga in today's world. We generally refer only to asanas, but yoga is much, much more than that. Uh, then, along with that, you have to have pranayama, which is the practice of breathing exercises. Then you have pratyahara, that is withdrawal of senses from external uh, world and distractions. Then we have dharana, which is concentration. 
And then we have dhyana, which is deep concentrated meditation. And finally, we have samadhi, which is transcendence of self to the bliss of the spiritual world. Now this process, if we can follow, then we help our entire being to become more healthy. And when we go to very high levels of realization through dhyana meditation, what we see is that we see uh, the whole universe as one. We see every human being as part of us. So we, uh, we realize actually that the entire universe is one and we realize that every human being, every living creature, everything on this uh, earth are all part of us. So when we have that realization, then only we talk about, you know, feeling for uh, each other. Then we talk about one earth, one family. And that is when we can really help each other to develop, to grow, and to uh, uh, create a global uh, human family. And I think this is the way in which we can go get over these wars and so many problems that the world is facing today. That is through realization that each and every human being, each and every living creature, each and everything on this universe, all are part of the one, uh, one uh, source. So I think this is something, uh, this comprehensive approach should be something which we should all encourage people to follow. It is actually a technique. Yoga is actually a technique. It is not a religion or anything. It's a technique by which you improve yourself from inside and outside. So on this special on a special occasion, I would uh, invite and request everyone to join us and improve each and every human being so that each and every human being can live a fulfilled and a comprehensive life and a happy life. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you, Samit. This is wonderful. Uh, I want to invite Dr. Annie Kalyani Jain. She is the founder of Meaningful World, an NGO representative at the United Nations. Additionally, she is an adjective pro professor of psychology at Teachers College in Columbia University. Dr. Your floor for you. Open your mic, doctor. Open your mic. Okay. Yeah, it's open now. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Guruji, and everyone, uh, friends and uh, ambassador. Welcome to this uh, wonderful World uh, Yoga Day. And uh, the crisis we had earlier reinforces the need and the importance of uh, gathering as such to bring peace uh, within us and all around us. We have created that meaningful world, a short uh, 15 minute uh, exercise called soul surfing that uses yoga movements and adds seven different steps to practice it and it's a mind-body experience focusing on pranayama, the breath work, focusing on color consciousness with each energy center, what kind of color is vibrating through that energy center electromagnetically. And then third, visualization, really looking at the energy center within and realizing organ connections. What organs are we activating, balancing, cleansing, and, and uh, bringing peace? And then the um, uh, affirmations, which are positive statements specific to each energy center. And then of course the movement in itself and uh, all together comes to a harmonious, what we call it soul surfing. And as mentioned earlier, yoga has been researched in uh, those who were traumatized because we work usually with traumatized populations such as uh, slavery and the generational impact of a slaver, a slavery individual trauma, collective trauma, such as the COVID-19 that everyone in the world 
experienced it on a different level, as well as vicarious trauma, especially people like you, healers like us, and doctors, physicians who are listening and taking care of traumatized people every day, they may also get vicarious trauma, secondary trauma. And then the fifth trauma is the horizontal trauma, what we cause to one another. So the purpose of these exercises are to release the hostage in our body because whatever is on the mind then overwhelms and really holds our body and our cells in a, almost like a hostage. The research shows that trauma that is not transformed will be transferred to 14 generations. So this is serious. So we are all traumatized on many levels. So we start with the a gentle self-massage by cupping our uh, right hand and going all the way one by one at all parts of our body. And then uh, we start with the root chakra. The root chakra being color red is located at the end of our spine. So we inhale and then mindfully bring our spine down in a squatting position. And then what we do is uh, this helps us with our uh, survival needs uh, um, and it helps us ground into mother earth rooting, grounding. And when we are grounded with Mother Earth, we're not going to feel fear and uncertainty and trauma. We're gonna feel strong and connected. So the affirmation would be, I trust myself and Mother Earth. I am grounded and connected with Mother Earth. I love and nurture Mother Earth and Mother Earth nurtures me. Then the second chakra, which is really around the navel and the color is orange. So we envision orange ball of light around our navel while we circle our hips around to the right and to the left, balancing our emotions and uh, uh, committing to relationships, meaningful relationships, not abusive relationships. So here in the second sacral chakra, we turn our hips around seven times to the right and seven times to the left. And we affirm, I am radiant, beautiful, creative and passionate. I enjoy a healthy and passionate life. And then we move on to our solar plexus right in the center of, of our belly and the color is yellow. We imagine yellow ball of light uh, vibrating right in the center of our, our belly, giving us that self-confidence and self-esteem, self-acceptance. And we breathe into it uh, from three to seven breath, depending what area we want to balance and work on and activate more. And this uh, before that, this uh, affirmation will be, um, I am a peaceful warrior. I use positive words, not negative. And the other side of peaceful warrior would be, I release all negativity and negative toxic people from my life. Then we move on to the heart. The heart is where we hold a lot of betrayals and trauma and distress. And the heart has two sides. We first work on a, the, as the cow phase, we work on the right side first. The right side, we are working on self-care. So in the right side, we affirm, I love and respect myself fully and unconditionally. I love, respect, and accept myself fully and unconditionally. Just like in the airplane, they say in times of crisis to put the mask on ourselves first, then helping others. So we need to be mindful as helping professionals to be able to engage in self-care, self-love, self-acceptance. And then the left side, 
we say, I love, respect, and accept my family, my friends, my community, my country, humanity, and all living things fully and unconditionally. Then we move on to the third um, exercise in the heart area. It's called the secret prayer. This is very important. The secret prayer, we open up our heart and really release all negativity. And then we start sending love to those people that have hurt us. Like the people earlier, mindless people who hacked us, we send them love because those people who do damage to others, who cause trauma to others, they are traumatized inside. So that's what they share, what they're feeling inside, the horror, the, the chaos and, and the confusion. Uh, be, and why do we send love, people always ask, because they are our best teachers, our best gurus, our best doctors, because we don't learn those things in classrooms. We don't learn forgiveness and patience and all the virtues that was mentioned earlier. Uh, we don't learn it in uh, structured classrooms. Then is the fifth energy center, the throat chakra. And here it affects our uh, uh, voice, uh, our throat, our facial problems, and anorexia nervosa, and a lot of thyroid issues. So we are afraid to speak out and say the truth. So this throat chakra is, fish pose is very good for this, or we can put our fists together and push our uh, gently our chin up to the sky and affirm and then exhale tucking our chin to the chest so this is the exercise it really opens up our thyroid as well as our voice here we affirm I express my true feelings easily and effortlessly I am assertive I am in touch with my authentic self and express my needs and desires assertively. A lot of us go into aggression because we are not asserting and expressing and the bottle goes up, 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 up and frustration goes around. And then we hurt one another. It's called horizontal violence where we cause the problem that we see and experience is going on around us. The sixth energy center chakra is right in the brow area between the two eyes. And this is for the uh, extrasensory perceptions, intuition that we are born with. And this is something that we forget as soon as we start going to school. So when this chakra is balanced, we are very clear, we are very focused, we can see things before they are happening and that is energetic uh, connection. And in this energy center, the affirmation is with our eyes closed, we say, I am open and I can see things even with my eyes closed, I can see things easily and effortlessly because I'm igniting my intuition, my God-given intuition. And I feel, sense, and imagine peace and within me and all around me. And the crown energy center, which is usually uh, purple or white, and this is to open up our connection like antennas and connect with deity, with the galaxy and with the uh, brother, sun and sister moon. Connect mm -hmm. and really visualize seven feet all around. This is not where I end. I have seven feet above my head, seven feet below and seven feet all around me. So when I talk or when I deliberate, I am mindful of my energetic impact on mm -hmm. others. And here we say, I am connected with the, to the universe. I am in balance and harmony within me with others, deity and the universe. 
So according to the research that we've done in 48 countries, people come to our workshops, and this is our last uh, step of our seven-step healing modality that integrates mind, body, spirit, and Mother Earth. And they always report, oh, I almost didn't want to come to the workshop because my shoulder is hurting and my neck is hurting and my back is hurting. And then after this 15 minute exercise and affirmations and visualization and intention, as well as essential oils, people come out, they say, oh my God, what a great feeling. I feel free. I feel like my chains, I, I'm not already uh, imprisoned within our, myself because trauma uh, that we, uh, the five different kinds of trauma I mentioned before, it's stamped in our body. We need to release it from our body as well as our mind and move ahead. And we end, I like to invite you to all uh, do this exercise. It's heart to heart circle of love. Yes, we are in Zoom and we are in the squares, but imagine we are in circle like at the UN. So put the left hand on your heart and the right hand, imagine that you're putting it on the other person's heart, the other person that is on your right. You are putting your right hand on their heart. So if you may please all of you do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, left hand in the heart Hello. and the right hand the holding name. on the other person's heart. And we close our eyes oh, sure. and together we say, What's may peace on? prevail on. on earth. Together, may peace may prevail speak. on uh, her, I earth. Maybe soon, because so we, only, we lost a few because of this high trauma. Uh, we say, may peace, peace prevail, prevail on earth, earth. repeatedly. And then you see here in the photo where everyone's right hand is on the other person's heart. So this is called the heart to heart circle of love and gratitude, where we are so silent that we can hear the other person's heartbeat. And if the heartbeat is irregular, fast or very slow or unhealthy, with our positive love and intention, electromagnetically, we make all the hearts in the circle beat in unison, in health, and in strength. And then we end with Ubuntu circle where everyone open palms, holding their palm, uh, thumbs together. We are in circle. And this is the African philosophy, Ubuntu, which means I am because of you. Without you, I am nothing. And uh, we end with a short meditation and then hugging. If everybody can hug yourselves now, we need minimum of uh, eight hugs per day. So uh, hugging is very important. This is the time that we are missing all the hugging. So try to find your loved ones in your home. Oh and in all walks of life. Whatever is the motivation of each of us, yoga has united all of us around this one creed. In India, though there is some controversy about uh, yoga being connected to particular religions, uh, yoga practitioners include Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Christians, and Muslims. No matter what, it helps us to become better human beings as a result of yoga and meditation. Our human family needs more people with the disciplines and common interests surpassing our religion, nationality, gender, or color of skin. So I was privileged, uh, at the United, uh, pri privileged to be present at the United Nations on 11th December 2014 when the uh, United Nations General Assembly passed the resolution 69-131 uh, as the 21st June as the International Day of Yoga. After six years, we cannot be inside the, uh, inside the UN, but we are all around this uh, theme and around this computer. <laughs> I'm grateful for this opportunity to connect with so many of my UN colleagues. Some of them spoke before me. And also like-minded people, and let us, along with the United Nations, promote yoga for global health, 
harmony and peace. As earth siblings and global citizens, let us promote everything that enhances common good, especially at this time of sufferings and division. Om Shanti, peace, shalom, may peace prevail on earth. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Wonderful to hear from you. I want to invite Dr. Reverend Dr. Kathleen T. Regan. She's a global ambassador for well, your community and dean at All Faith Seminary International. The prayer and little message. Dr. Kathleen. Uh, one minute. You had to unmute it. How's yeah. that? Yeah, that's good. Yep. good. Yeah. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Namaste. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here with everyone today. And unfortunately, we had a little disruption. But when I was learning about yoga philosophy from the Shivananda tradition, I remember distinctly learning the three A's, adapt, adjust, accommodate. And I feel that that's exactly what we did today. We didn't let that disruption hurt us at all today. We just kept going. So what I wanna to talk today about is the glory of satsang or satsanga. The word yogada, Y-O-G-O-D-A, is a word that Paramahansa Yogananda coined many years ago. And it derives from the word yoga, meaning union, harmony, DA, which means in part. Satsanga helps us acquire a deeper understanding of yoga. You know, when I first learned about yoga, I was a, a teenager and all I knew was that it had to do with exercise. And I remember the yoga teacher said, if you want to practice yoga, you cannot eat meat. And I said, okay. And I stopped eating meat, but I didn't understand the philosophy behind that. I didn't understand ahimsa. It was only many, many years later that I learned about how deep and vast yoga is and that it is something that encompasses your entire world. So satsanga is so important and Gurji is a master at this. He's been doing satsangs, you know, since I know him on a regular basis. So <clears throat> satsang is a divine fellowship. Yoga is so much more than in the West, we associate it with just the physical, the asana, the postures, but it is so much more. And I wanna stress this felt divine fellowship because I feel that this is the area that is so needed in today's society. It's an association with a spiritual person or persons. There should be a guru in the, in the uh, room, but satsanga promotes a detachment from worldly things that we become attached to. We are not, once you're in the satsang, it might be chanting, meditation, a reading from the scriptures, a spiritual discussion, no politics, prayer. Okay. This is really, really important to our own transformation. It's a spiritual transformation. Satsang will lead us to develop a pure intellect and makes God our focus or a higher mind, our higher power, our focus. So even if one claims that they are agnostic or they, are, uh, they don't believe in God, they will still benefit from satsang 
because it's a spiritual community. It's a spiritual development. And the more that you engage in this satsanga, you will become closer to that divine. It's a personal transformation. And you may not be as agitated by worldly things like hatred and all these things that we are clouding our, our mind with these days. There has been so much delusion. But this is a wonderful uh, lesson for especially people in the West. Now, <clears throat> Paramahansa Yogananda actually named his fellowship or his, his group when he came to this country he wanted the Westerners to really understand the meaning of yoga. So he called his group the Self-Realization Fellowship or Fellowship with Truth. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna in chapter um, <clears throat> 7 talks to Arjuna, who he refers to as Bharata. So Bharata, B-H-A means light, and Rata in pra implies devoted to light. And he goes on to explain, once you develop devotion to the light that dwells within, to God, to the truth within, the darkness of all your negative qualities will scatter. So how do I translate that? I translate that as the more I engage in satsang, my mind becomes more pure. My heart is more devoted to things of the truth. And all those negative qualities, negative thoughts begin to dissipate because we put our focus on that light. We put our focus on the truth through the reading and listening of the scriptures, through chanting, through listening to beautiful music, and the engagement of being with other people. You know, today is very difficult because of the COVID-19. We cannot physically be close to each other. And we, we thank God we have this platform. But I hope very soon that there'll become a day when we can be back with our brothers and sisters. And <clears throat> somebody before um, talked about affirmations, spiritual affirmations. And I'm going to read you something again from Paramahansa Yogananda. He had a lot of, he wrote about spiritual scientific healing through affirmation. And he said, as one uses different affirmations, his attitude of mind should change. For example, will affirmation should be accompanied by strong determination, feeling affirmations by devotion, reason affirmation by clear understanding, when healing others, select an affirmation that is suitable <clears throat> to the imaginative, emotional, and thoughtful temperament of the person in front of you, the client or the patient. In all affirmations, intensity of, a, of attention comes first, but continuity and repetition mean a great deal too. So impregnate your affirmations with devotion, will, and faith intensely and repeatedly, unmindful of the results, which will come naturally as the fruit of your labor. And I would like to end with sharing this with everyone. So this is a, an interfaith menorah it stands for unity and harmony, and it was created by Rabbi Joseph Gelberman, my teacher. And it stands for uniting with 
people of all different faith traditions. So in Judaism, there's a menorah where candles are placed, the center candle, meaning the light of God or the divine. But this interfaith menorah lights the truth of all different traditions and faiths. And I'll re just read you a little something here about it. The central column of this menorah represents the eternal light. It is this light that kindles and nurtures the lights of the eight major faith traditions of humanity. The interfaith menorah symbolizes that a part of the eternal light is in each faith as only a part of God's wisdom is given to each religion. The message here is this, in order to receive the wisdom, all the wisdom of God, to be fully illuminated, we must dialogue with each other, accept each other and love each other. This message is expressed biblically as love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's the message of satsang. And I hope that you could see this. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. illustration. And it really brings to mind, when I see this menorah, I think of satsang and the beauty of it. And I thank you for participating today. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you everyone that was on the call today and i bless all of you namaste thank you doctor uh we have somebody from india especially from my hometown uh yogini gayatri menon she's an ngo youth representative to the united nation at the value of a community gayatri floor is for you um, hi am i audible yes can you hear me okay um, namaste and wishing everybody a healthy and happy yoga day. What happened was a little unfortunate, but uh, yes, we did adapt. So I'm Gayatri Menon, like Guruji mentioned, and I'm a youth representative at the World Yoga Community. Uh, firstly, I would just like to express my gratitude for being provided with this opportunity to address such a diverse and accomplished group of global citizens. And that too, to talk about yoga, which is a practice that is extremely close to my heart. So this year, as we all know, the theme for the International Day of Yoga is Yoga at Home and Yoga with Family. And while this theme had to be decided due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, I feel that the theme and the message it expresses is actually very relevant to the practice of yoga, even if the situation were not so unfortunate. Uh, when I heard the theme for this year, I remembered a talk given by a renowned spiritual leader. I would just like to dwell upon the essence of the message he propagated at his talk. So on being asked questions about identity and the purpose of our life, he responded by asking us to reflect on all the things we identify with and how we identify with those things. And when I reflected on this, I realized that it is safe to say that for many of us, our earliest form of identity comes from our families we can trace a lot of the characteristics we exhibit to the circumstances in our households, the traditions followed by our families, the values we were taught to uphold, etc. And as we started growing and gaining more exposure to the world outside of our homes, we were slowly able to expand on this idea of identity to incorporate identities relating to society, community, and then the nation. Some go further to start identifying with animals, and establishing that we need to break free of imposed boundaries. Some may attach their identities with intangible things, such as a cause that they might be passionate to further. But ultimately, it does end up boiling down to identifying ourselves with something that has a potential to limit us in some manner or the other. And this realization created a paradox in my mind, as during my yoga teacher training at the Shivananda Ashram, we were constantly taught that we are infinite and limitless. And yet, our actions seem to suggest something short of that. And we might even find it difficult to wrap our heads around this concept 
purely because we may not have experienced that feeling of being infinite. But the spiritual leader's message brings it all back to how we perceive and identify ourselves with all these identities that limit us and how it is important to break free from these norms and start consciously inculcating a cosmic identity where the entire universe becomes our home. The practice of yoga helps us to achieve precisely this by bringing awareness to our deepest roots and by encouraging us to find union with creation itself. I would like to re-emphasize that the meaning of the word yoga is union. So then it makes sense that we try and identify uh, with the cosmos as doing so will give us a purpose to work towards the welfare of the entire universe. But this raises the question of how we can achieve that. It might be difficult for us to just wake up one day and decide that we identify with the cosmos. And that is where the simple practice of yoga asana and pranayam can prepare us physically and mentally to undertake the deeper journey of self-discovery, which can hopefully propel us to one day experience the feeling of oneness with the universe. Yoga asana practice, which has become synonymous with yoga in the modern world, is actually one of the steps through which we can discover the potential of identifying with the cosmos. And since we're starting from the basics, what better way to initiate this practice than from our earliest sense of identity, which is our home and our families. Because of this, I feel that the theme is very relevant and would urge anybody who is fortunate to be at home and with their families during this unfortunate time to initiate the practice and explore what possibilities it could open up for you. And as someone who feels fortunate to have discovered and imbibed this practice at a fairly young age, I can confidently say that it has empowered me to strive to attain a global identity, if not a cosmic one. Gaining a global identity is all the more relevant for the youth. As young people, we carry a responsibility to ensure the smooth functioning of the society. And that responsibility does not just fall on the ones who choose to become leaders. It falls on every single one of us. Just imagine a world where kindness and compassion were the norm instead of attributes that we revel, where anger is met with love and happiness is a state of equilibrium. Sounds like a dream, but through constant emphasis on it, I believe it is possible to mold a generation that can adopt these virtues as a way of life by directing the energy of the youth towards such initiatives at an age where they're flexible enough to listen and adapt, I believe it is possible for us to create a series of better todays rather than awaiting for a better tomorrow. On this note, I would like to conclude by quoting a definition of yoga from the Bhagavad Gita. Yoga is selfless, cleansing, freeing, balancing, inspiring, and joyfully performed actions based on a vision in which one experiences peaceful interconnectedness with all life around them. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Gayatri Maya. I want to invite Dr. Remy Alapo. She is the Global Ambassador for Well Your Community and the NGO representative at the United Nations. And she is the person helping us to set up this Zoom. Remy, floor is for you. Unmute. Remy. Dr. Remy, unmute your phone. Apologies. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dilipji. And apologies again uh, for the little incidents we had, uh, I mean, the incident we had earlier with your determination and resilience and the persistence to continue with our program um, in bringing peace. We're all here. I would like to start with a short prayer that was adapted from the U.S. Council of Bishops. In light of what is currently going on in the U.S., let us open our hearts and our minds on this International Day of Yoga to forgive everyone and request for reconciliation in our hearts so that we can move on peacefully as one family under God. God of heaven and earth, you created the one human family and endowed each person with great dignity. Aid us, we pray, in overcoming the sins of racism. Grant us your grace in eliminating this blight from our hearts, our communities, our social and civil institutions. Fill our hearts with love 
for you and our neighbor so that we may work for you in healing our land from racial injustice. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns in you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. As I continue, I would like each and every one of us to have a personal reflection in our heart and examine our conscience, take a good look at the mirror in ways we, we may have participated both consciously and unconsciously in bringing about injustice without even knowing or knowingly to other people. Let us ask God to come into our hearts so that we can um, grow even more in faith through uh, the right actions. Today, my brothers and sisters, my message on peace is for us to recognize that racism manifests in our individual thoughts, attitudes, actions, and inactions. It also manifests in social structures and unjust systems that have perpetrated centuries of racial injustice. For our individual actions, both direct and indirect participation in unjust structures, let us seek forgiveness and move towards reconciliation. Let us look into our hearts and ask for the will and the strength to help contribute to the healing of racism in our time. Let us seek forgiveness and reconciliation to act justly. And many of you may be wondering what this is. It's um, usually in the African tradition and those who have adopted um, African spirituality um, we usually have sort of like a command, like a share, which means acceptance of you know will and prayer from God. With this, I would like to leave us with a prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in my language, and it's in the Yoruba tradition that many of us we find in uh, places um, originating outside of. Southwestern Nigeria, in Benin Republic, which is right next to Nigeria, and in many of diaspora Africa. Uh, for example, in um, Cuba, places in North Carolina, in Brazil, um, in uh, many, many, many places around the world um, speak this um, language or a variation of it. So the Lord's Prayer in my language, which is the Yoruba language in Southeastern Niger Southwestern Nigeria, is called Adua Olua, which means the Lord's Prayer. And it goes, Baba wa timbe ni on, kabo wa fun oru kore, ki ijoba arede, tire ni ke ashe laye, ati ni on, fun ani onje ojo wa loni, dari e she wa jiwa, bi ati ndari ji a wanto she wa, mag pa wa si no adon wo, ba wa lo wa bilisi, tori ijoba ni tire, agbara ni tire, O go ni tire, lie, lie, ami, ami, ami. May peace prevail on earth. May hey, peace prevail on earth. Remy, that was great. Great to hear other language in our oh. team. <laughs> because I, I will request everybody to unmute. We want to hear different sound here. Just say hi in you know, language. Namaskaram. Namaskar. 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 Om Shanti. Great, great, great. So I, 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 I remember one year back, because we, we were going with our social media pages, especially yoga page and the well yoga community. Every single day, 1,000 to 1,500 people join in our group. <coughs> Suddenly, one day, somebody hacked. We lost everything. Over 300,000 people we lost. They hacked the page, they put the uh, naked woman's picture on my profile. And I was at the UN, somebody called me, something happened to you. I said, what happened? Somebody hacked your page. I said, oh yeah. Anyway, it took one year to fix. I never give up. Now, majority of the pages are back in our country. So this is the human mind. If somebody is doing good things, the evil spirit will come and try to destroy. So today we had this experience. Now when this happened, I thought, oh, oh. And June 30th, we have our yoga festival online with the different uh, 
association from different parts of the world and if that happening in that event it will be destroy our name you know that's so it is then i said should i do that word or not i said no i am not going to give up because how much they get harder that much we had to love them and care about them and make sure this has to be vanished from the world this is a major problem even at the un one of the events i asked them why we cannot take global action to stop all pornography is a big problem you know so for us we have a duty to stand for the values yamas and nemas when yoga teachers are trained without yama and nemas this is a problem so as a un community definitely we have to push forward do hard work and even though we have different opinions fine for when it coming to the global concern we had to come together we had to act so here i put uh, in the chat box let there be peace on earth song i think we should all together join together and sing it ready 1 2 3 let the melody begin with me let the about her master in the hospital so that is a blessing for him to to remember the krishna krishna consciousness yeah. as a jay jay radha ramana hari bol that's the only line we have jay jay radha ramana hari bol call and response right call and response sit here go please Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Bo 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 Woo! <laughs> 
Thank you, Guruji. Thank you, Guruji, and uh, wish you all uh, International Yoga Day. Uh, happy Yoga Day. And um, thank you so much, Guruji, for inviting me. And uh, 21st uh, June celebration International of Yoga, where people are made aware of the benefit of yoga. Uh, one uh, sutra is in the Yog Sutra, Abhyasa Vairagyam Vihamtan Nirodaya. Abhyasa in meaning in practices, everyday in practices and healthy life. And uh, you can uh, yoga every day, 
practice you can develop self uh, discipline and uh, self awareness from yoga if you practice regularly uh, you will be uh, gain a sense of power once you do it uh, concentrate uh, and help you uh, lead a healthy life free any problem thank you so much everyone and guruji i like to hear from nilaya she was the, one of the student from sami bua she is living in brazil she, uh, she was in the olympic team in brazil nilaya hello guruji are you hear me it's okay yeah good good oh okay so i'm very glad to be here with you all i thank you all for this moment of gatherness and uh, this is yoga unity is getting together and uh, especially every day if we can uh, save some time to vibrate ourselves with uh, this unity with this uh, moment with this um, loving and compassionate energy uh nelea okay yeah. <laughs> so uh i'm really grateful from my heart from all of you for all the efforts everybody uh put out in the world so let's just uh vibrate the om can we vibrate om together for um a good uh, loving moment of peace and uh, compassionate and uh, so um and let this om embrace our planet earth and our universe every single moment we can remember to vibrate ourselves in love and compassion that's yoga thank you so much so much a happy day every day everybody thank, thank you thank you melia uh, gabriel premdas you want to say something yes guruji namaste everyone happy happy international day of yoga This is a wonderful opportunity, wonderful experience. Thank you all for um including me and uh it's been a very humbling uh path, I'd say. And uh the the learning seems endless. Uh it's a wonderful, 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 wonderful existence. So, um Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Guruji <laughs> your mic Guruji mic my my mic mic is working work yeah. yeah so i want to th thank our co-sponsors the UNSR yoga club medical mission sisters universal peace federation meaningful world american medical women's associations women's federation for well peace institute of international social development Institute for Peace and Leadership in International Guru Community and the Committee of the Yoga at the UN and others those who are supporting. I want to thank Remy and Gabriel and Raj Bhushan and Ann Patoli. They are with me last ten years in different events and supporting very well. and all the ngo representatives and ambassador and his wife and all the people from abroad you know because of your patience and the support this happened so remember we won't give up we will continue our work that is our mission whatever happening in our life take it positive way this is our seva for the community 
we don't have to worry about it so we take it easy so we'll finish end with the mantras just close your eyes three ohms together om om ம்ரையம்பகம் யஜாமே சுகந்திம் புஷ்டிவர்தனம் பூர்வாருமியோபந்தனாமேயமாம்ரதாத்ம்ரையம்பகம் யஜாமே சுகந்திம் புஷ்டிவர்தனம் பூர்வாருமியோபந்தனாமேயமாம்ரதாத்ம்ரையம்பகம் யஜாமே சுகந்திம் புஷ்டிவர்தனம் பூர்வாருமியோபந்தனாமேயமாம்ரதாத் ஓம்ஷாந்திர்பவதுசோமாஜோதிர்கமயோர்மாமயோர்மாமுதே பூர்ணய பூர்ணமாதாய பூர்ணமேவாவசிஷ்யே ஓம் சாந்தி 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 யோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்தோகாசமஸ்